Hi, welcome back to Christine's Home Affairs. Kerry from Western Australia has been sharing some of her jar openers on Facebook recently. We have a Facebook group called Christine's Home Affairs. And she's been sharing lots of photos of the ones that she's been doing. They're very pretty. And a lot of people have been asking how she's made them. She was having difficulty explaining how they're made, so she's asked me to do a quick video, and that's what we're doing today. I haven't made them before, but I'm going to go by her instructions, and we'll have a look and see how these turn out. They're going to be a great scrap buster as well. Today's project is just going to be using six and a half inch squares of fabric, which is, I think, about 16 centimetres. So all you need is a few squares of fabric and some rubber matting like this, or even like this one here. This one's actually a little bit thick, but that's what I've got, so I'm going to use that today. I don't quite have enough of the thinner one. I actually used this in a project a little while back to make an under, under the sewing machine uh, cover and you can catch your rubbish and put your tools in there that's really good stuff to sew with uh, we'll see what happens with this thicker one hang around and we'll make these uh, jar openers together all right we don't need much at all i'm going to make two of these in the six and a half inch or 16 and a half centimeter size and then i'm going to make a couple of others just testing a couple of different things out with the uh, different types of rubber that I'm using. So what I've got here are two pieces of fabric, uh, 16 and a half centimetres or six and a half inches. You can round this to 16 off, 17 centimetres and up to seven inches. It really doesn't matter what size you make. And the rubber matting is going to be exactly the same size. I'm going to make this a little bit different and add a loop so that you can hang this up in the kitchen if you like and that will be eight by five centimeters or three by two inches and all you'll do is fold the raw edges in and then fold the edges in again and stitch across that's what I've done with this little tab here and I've also done that with this one over here so I've got just the same color fabric it really doesn't matter because you're not going to see the other one uh, a tab and I've got the thicker rubber matting here. Now what I've done with this one is join two pieces together because I really wanted to know how this one fared against the thicker rubber and I also don't like wastage. So what I've done with the thinner one is stitched it together. I've just lined the two edges up and sewn down the long edge. Then I've gone and top stitched. So the raw edges are underneath and this will be the right side facing out. I think it'll be perfectly fine. So that'll be my way to test which one of these products I like to use better and which are easier to sew with. And the other thing I wanna know is, is it better to sew with the rubber side facing down or the rubber side facing up? So I'm going to grab some more rubber bits, some more fabric and just try that out in a couple of different sizes. I'll just use some scrap fabric. So enough waffling on, let's put this together. It's really incredibly simple. So after you've sewn the long edges of your tab, and that's completely optional, you don't need to have tabs. Let's take the lining fabric and we'll have that faced up. And then we'll take the rubber matting that we've got. And I've got this raw edge here. So I want the raw edge facing my lining because when this project is finished, this will actually be right on top of my lining. So you just want to line that up nicely there. Grab your outer fabric and we'll place that right side down. And then we'll grab our little tab for the corner and we'll pop that in the corner. So with our layers, what we have, right side up, wrong side down, right side down. And then we can pin all of that together and we'll leave an opening just here. So I'll do exactly the same for the other one. It's even easier. I don't have to think about which one's going to be the right side up. Pattern up the rubber mat sandwiched in between, right side facing down, and my tab on the inside. Okay, I'll start off by sewing this little tab closed and we'll just sew right down both long edges. So that's it finished up. 
and then all you need to do is insert that into the corner of one of your jar openers. So I'm going to start at the bottom where the opening is here. We'll start around about here. Seam allowance really doesn't matter. You just need to make sure that you leave enough fabric so that you can fold it over when you close it up for top stitching later. Back stitch here. When I come to the corner, I'm going to do two stitches back and two stitches forward. That just helps reinforce the seam and it helps prevent any of the fabric from tearing or poking through when you turn it around. Turn your fabric around, two stitches forward and back and then continue on. I'm coming up to the corner now where I've got the little tab so I do want to reinforce that so I'll sew into the corner as usual back stitch turn around I'll come forward one extra stitch then I'm going to stitch along diagonally backward so oops so I'll reverse back up to that stitching line that I've done, come back down and then I can continue on straight. And this is the last corner and I want to leave probably about three fingers of an opening. And back stitch. And then I'll do that all again with the next one. So this is the corner where I've got the little tab that I want hanging. So I've come forward that extra stitch. Then I'm just going to turn that on the diagonal and reverse. Go back over that again and then continue on straight. And don't forget to leave an opening. I almost went too far. Ah, oh, no. We've got our jar openers sewn together and here are my test subjects. So what we're going to do is trim the corners. So you just want to cut close to the corners at the stitching line. This will help give nicer corners. This one doesn't have a tab on the inside. And just cut diagonally across the tab as well and I'll repeat that for the others as I mentioned earlier I'm using two different types of rubber so one is quite a bit thicker than the other to help reduce some of that bulk what you can do is just spread your seam apart you can go and cut the rubber off with scissors so I'm just going to cut close to the edge with my rotary cutter making sure I don't cut the fabric on the underside so that'll just help reduce some of that bulk on the side this is the side where the opening is I want to fold that stitching line down that will give me a nice crisp edge when I turn everything through and top stitch so it makes no difference whether you use scissors or a rotary cutter you've just got to be careful that you don't cut the fabric on either side now when you do cut these rubber edges back don't cut the edge where you've got the opening here what you need to do when you close it is to feed that rubber matting inside the seam otherwise it's going to be sticking out so I've actually gone and restitched my bottom seam in just a little bit because I did cut too much off here uh, and when I turn this the right way around it'll actually 
sit inside the lining. Let's take this to the machine. Oh, let's turn this the right way around. When you turn this the right way around, you want to make sure that you're turning it so that the outer fabric is showing, not the lining fabric, because the lining fabric is really just to sit underneath that mat. So you can poke out all your corners. I'm using my new toy that Elsa sent me. And then we can fold the edge under. So once you've got your opening sitting nicely along the edge there, we can take this back to the machine and we can do a top stitch all the way around. Once you've done that top stitch, then you can do a big cross going right across the fabric. So we're going to go from the corner all the way down here and from this corner along here. If you want to, you can mark your fabric just by drawing a straight line right across the center but I usually just eyeball it. What I have discovered after doing my sample pieces is that it's actually much easier to top stitch these layers when you have the rubber faced down on your machine. So the feed dogs or the teeth of your machine will help move that fabric along or the rubber and it'll make the stitching much nicer along the top. If you go and sew from the rubber side up, what I've just found is that this rubber wants to fight against the foot of my machine. So the feed dogs are feeding the fabric through nicely underneath, but the foot wants to fight against that rubber. Now Kerry did mention that she uses baking paper. Baking paper is the same as parchment paper, I think. So you can go and stick a piece of paper on the top and then sew if you want to sew from the top. The other thing you can use is a Teflon foot that will help as well. But I found it just really easy. Have the rubber side down and sew around the outside edge. Increase your stitch length a little bit for top stitching. That'll help as well. Let's go to the machine. So I'm starting at the bottom edge where the opening is and I've increased my stitch length to 3.5 and once your top stitching is done then we can sew right across the fabric And then we can do the next one. I might just mention that the needle size that I'm using is the 90 slash 14. It's only cotton fabric with a little bit of rubber so it doesn't need to be a very heavy gauge needle. I think the biggest problem with having the rubber on the underside is that it tends to stick to the table. So that's probably where I would use a, a, a waxed paper or a parchment or baking paper. But what you can do is just hold it up away from the edge of the table and then it's not going to resist feeding through the machine. So if you just hold it up like that, it'll just glide through nice and easily. And I'm ready to do the cross quilting on this piece. I'm just going to eyeball it. I haven't made any marks on there. What I do is I'll start in the corner and I always look at, at my end point rather than where I'm sewing because if I look where I'm sewing I'm going to go crooked. And again I'm just holding the fabric up from the table a little bit and letting the machine pull it through. 
And there we have it, a couple of jar openers made really quickly. Uh, they don't take very much time at all and very easily too. So you can see the two different rubbers on the back here. This is the lighter one, this is the heavier one. They both sewed pretty well and I don't think it's actually necessary to go and trim the edges of the rubber either, especially not with the light one. Definitely not necessary at all. Uh, it really just depends on the amount of bulk that you want showing on here. I know that the excess seam is along here, but it really doesn't seem any thicker. So it's up to you whether you want to trim the edges of your rubber back to help you sew this closed a little bit better, to help you with your top stitching a little bit more easily. Uh, definitely don't cut the rubber off on the side where your opening is though. So there we go. Wasn't that a very simple project? If you're going to sew these to sell, you can whip these up in no time. The rubber matting you can get from uh, your dollar store if you're in the US and from any of your $2 shops or your cheap shops in Australia and anywhere else, I guess. So the little tab on the corner is just a nice little addition. You can hang them up in the kitchen. I probably haven't left a very big tab, so maybe if you've got bigger hooks you might want to increase the size of this as well there's really not much room but it looks good anyway right <laughs> these are my little test samples i'm going to keep those for myself actually these two here and the project i did in a previous video which was this little um bag that opens out from the side it's using the same fabric this and these two are going to be gifted to the lady that gave me the fabric. I've had a lady come in recently and she just keeps dropping off fabric to me every week. She's having a big clean out. So I'm going to gift those to her because she doesn't want anything for the fabric that she's given me. <laughs> anyway, back to this video. So these were pretty easy to make. What have I learnt? <laughs> I've learnt that I can easily sew the rubber back together again without any problems. You can barely even notice it and it's a great way to use up little scrappy pieces especially with a thinner rubber to stop the rubber from sticking to the bottom of your machine either just use some paper or hold it up on the sides and it'll glide through your machine easily for myself I did find that sewing with the fabric right side up was much easier than sewing with the rubber side up because the rubber wanted to uh, push toward me just by holding the fabric away from the bed of the machine helped that glide through. You want to see how this works now, don't you? I've had to go and find a jar. Uh, this is a jar of, I think it's cauliflower pickles that I made some time back. So we'll see how it goes. I actually probably need these myself because I am extremely weak in the wrists these days. So just place the rubber side down on top of your jar and turn. I better put this down. <laughs> I can't even open this because I'm still weak in the shoulder. This is really tightly closed. Okay, what I can tell you is that I've sealed this jar really, really well. I still have no strength in my wrists because I had carpal tunnel surgery, so I don't have full strength in my wrists and I certainly don't have any strength in my shoulder yet. The rubber sticks to the top of the jar really well and... Seriously, I'm as weak as grass at the moment, but <laughs> I'm not going to let it beat me. Oh, I got it. So it's held on really well and it's finally cracked open. Cucumber and cauliflower pickles. Smells nice. <laughs> Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this video. These do work a treat. I think at the end of the day, you still need to have a little bit of strength in your hands. I'm certainly not as strong as I used to be. I think I need to get out and do some more exercise. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I shall catch you next time. Thanks for getting me to do this, Kerry. Bye for now.